Although Excel automatically adjusts some column widths, and even more likely it will adjust row heights, you still need to make these adjustments yourself sometimes. And although there are commands for these changes, usually it's going to be easier to use either the mouse by dragging or by double clicking to quickly adjust individual or multiple column widths and row heights. In this particular worksheet, we've got data for six months and then a total and then an average. Recognize that the total column is a bit wider and that's to be expected because the numbers are larger there. But you might want to adjust the other columns to be the same. Now, you can select an individual column and adjust its width simply by dragging the right edge wider, narrower as needed. Notice that if you make it too narrow, you will see pound signs, and anytime you do see pound signs, you need to adjust the width of that column. But rather than manually dragging a column leftward or rightward, why not double click its right hand border? And that means use a so called best fit. In other words, analyze what's in the column and make the column wide enough to handle the widest entry. And if we wanted to adjust these columns one by one, we could certainly do that, but it's going to be much more efficient if, for example, we say, you know, I think it would look better if each of these monthly entries had a wider column. So let's drag across columns B through G. Now, when you hover the mouse right over one of the column boundaries, when you hold down the left mouse button, you do see an actual width. And I think for many people that's simply trivia, but all of these are 64 pixels wide. If we simply drag this a bit wider, and we're just doing this somewhat arbitrarily, let's say, make them all be 70. We're adjusting all these at the same time. And maybe you just think that looks better. So fine, that's the rationale for doing it sometimes. Column H here, if we hold down the left mouse button on its right border, 75 pixels. And if somehow you said, I want all of these to be the same width, well, highlight them all, drag any of these boundaries to be 75 pixels, and then all of them will be 75 pixels wide. I think most people probably will not need that approach. Most of the time, as you add new data that's wider, Excel takes care of this. Now, maybe you've got another bit of information down below here, and it could be a longer number. What happens if it's text? Suppose we put in a text entry down here. Maybe it's just, you know, gonna put in something about the telecommunications department. The column does not become wider. Now, if somehow we ignored that or forgot about it, maybe it was down farther in the screen, we didn't happen to see it. What happens if we double click column B here? automatically adjust to be as wide as the widest entry. So here and there, you have to be thinking about what's in the column, but you can always drag the column width or simply double click to make it be the width you want. If we take out telecommunications, just delete it, come back and double click here. We've now made column B a so-called best fit. Now remember the others we earlier had dragged to all be the same. So if we want all these columns to be a best fit, we'll drag across all these double click any of the boundaries, and then each column is aligned based on what's in that column. If one of the numbers here becomes larger, suppose the June entry gets corrected, and it really should be 1050, 1050. As I press enter, watch the column get wider. Momentarily there you saw pound signs, but the main issue is that Excel automatically adjusted that, therefore column G is wider. Now with row heights, you don't have to worry as much about this, but you do have some control over it as well. It could be that you maybe would like to see this worksheet with a little bit more space between the entries. So we might possibly drag across these rows here and then drag the lower boundary down just a little bit maybe, and we're making all these rows taller for a more spacious look perhaps. So you've got different rationales for doing this. If we want to readjust all of our rows at once, we can click in the upper left-hand corner. And we can also do this for columns, by the way, too. So we'll click in the upper left-hand corner. If we double click any of the row boundaries, it will automatically adjust all of the row heights to be a so-called best fit. So we're back to the so-called normal situation. If you had a large amount of data and you wanted to print it out double spaced, you wouldn't really have to insert some rows. You could just select the entire worksheet and make any row be twice as tall simply by dragging one of these. And now you would achieve the look of having this be double spaced.
I'm going to undo that with control Z. So there are different rationales for adjusting row height and column widths. A lot of these changes are automatic as you change data. And here's something that you want to be a little bit aware of. If we wanted to adjust all of the column widths throughout this worksheet, we could click in the upper left hand corner and double click any boundary. But uh, column A has a much wider entry here. So until you learn how to merge data, which you might do manually for column A only, let's make it be about that wide. So again, another technique for adjusting the width of a column. If you change the font size, going here into the toolbar and simply using a larger font, as we do this, watch the row height grow automatically. So there too, you don't have to worry about this. So it's an ideal feature, easy to use, adjusting column widths and row heights.